uh, Torch House at First Nazarene. Um, we are so blessed to be here among our friends. Um, first of all, I just want to extend a thank you to First Nazarene for hosting us and for Pastor Denny, who is actually home right now. He's not feeling great. Um, and in that, Lord, and, and, and we want to pray for them. Um, so let's just do that really quick. Father, we just pray that you would extend a hand of mercy just upon Denny right now, Lord, that you would just touch him and, and allow him to get good rest, that he would wake up in the morning and feel 100%. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. So we just want to thank you guys for the time and the energy. I mean, we're going to be here for a whole month. And when I asked, initially asked Pastor Denny, I was like, this is going to be five Fridays because it's, it's a long month for Fridays. He said, are you sure you want to do this? He's like, yeah, let's do it. So um, just want to, again, thank him for that, for taking that chance on us. And, and, and thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Lindsay. And thank you for everybody else that's putting extra time in and, and making sure the doors are open and, do and closed when they need to be closed. And um, we're just thankful to be here. And the plan tonight was to pray for the leaders of the church tonight of First Naz and to pray for you guys. And interestingly enough, throughout the week, the Lord kind of took me on a different trajectory. And then it turns out Denny's not here. So we're actually going to do that on the last, I think we're going to do that the last Friday. We'll have to check with him on that. But um, we're going to take a little bit different direction tonight. Um, so just a question really quick for those of you who are here. Um, who of you here are here from First Nazarene? Like this is your church where you go to church. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I just want to personally extend a thank you for myself and for some of our other team that have been here over the years. Like I think the first time we led worship here was like six or seven years ago on a Sunday morning. And then we've come back many other times since then. And like you guys have always just been so hospitable and just so kind. And I just want to say like as a, as a representative of the body of Christ in Terre Haute, like you guys represent Jesus so well, so well, like excellent, excellent representation of Jesus and the love and the hospitality that you show is just incredible. So give them a hand, please, for just being obedient and faithful to Jesus. So tonight, you know, some of you are from First Nazarene. Some of us are from other places. If I had to, let's see, count really quick. Two, one, two, three, four, five. So there's like usually like five or six churches represented on this team of people. Um, so each week you'll notice there'll be different people. Like Michelle's leading this week. I'm leading next week. We have someone else leading the following week. So we'll have different teams, different bass players, different drummers, different singers. And it's part of the collective uh, worship team that we have. We have about 30 volunteers that kind of rotate through um, on different instruments and vocals and prayer leading and stuff like that. So if you're interested in knowing more about that, just feel free to ask us any questions about that, um, of being a part of that. Um, we're open to anybody being a part of that. So, but I just point that out just to say, you know, as we look around the room tonight, what we're looking at is family. This is the family of God. And everybody in this room tonight is here for one purpose, and that's to seek the Lord, to honor Jesus in this place. So just know that you're among friends, you're among family, and um, he's here. He's here in the midst of us. So I just want to take just a quick minute before we start. I know a lot of you probably don't know each other. Are there somebody in the room that you don't know, including people on the stage? So. If we could just take a minute before we start anything and just stand up right where you're at and just move around a little bit. Say hi to somebody that you don't know. Tell them your name and where you attend church. It's cool.
Awesome. So since January, we've taken the Torch House mobile. We used to be in a location on 8th and Holman, and we would spend every Friday night there um, for the last almost nine years. Um, we're coming up on 15 years of ministry in Terre Haute. Um, in the, this summer will be 15 years. And we've always had a place to call the prayer room that we refer to back to as the prayer room. And what that means is it's a citywide expression of a place where the body of Christ can meet and pray together. And for the first time ever, you know, starting in January, we ha we've let go of our prayer room um, to come and to mobilize what God's doing. Um, and I just want to encourage you that the, the building that we were in was taken over by a church called Recharge Church. And that transition was supernatural. It was incredible, the relationship there. It was so beautiful, the transition. I was talking with um, the pastor and with his father, who was the pastor before him um, of that community. And they were just expressing so much gratefulness for that, for that space, but not only for the building and all the stuff that came with it, but the spiritual inheritance of having a space that people have been praying in for hundreds, if not thousands of hours for nine years and to be able to walk in that space. So they've actually taken on that identity as the prayer room and they're open every day for prayer. So if you ever wanna just find somewhere to go pray with people, they're open at noon to, from noon to one every single day, Monday through Saturday. And then Sunday is when they have their, their church service at noon. Um, but yeah, if you're ever going past Eighth and Holman at noon on a weekday, uh, feel free to pop in there and there'll be people in there praying. So it's just such an amazing thing that we gave up our prayer room space and then somebody else took it and is actually doing more hours than what we were doing when we left it. So we're so grateful for them. But what, what I wanted to share with that is, you know, each location that we've been to, we've been asking the Lord, what do you want to speak about? What do you want to bring to the body of Christ? Like, we're in this together. Every place that we go is connected. As, we, as I said before, we're a family. So we're really trying to tune in to more of the bigger picture of what God's saying to our city and even to the nation. Um, so as we were preparing for this location, um, the two, it's kind of a twofold theme that we're gonna be diving into over the next five weeks. And it's the love of the Father and the fear of the Lord. And those two realities are two sides of the same coin. When you bring Jesus into the midst of the people, you will get the love of the Father expressed through Jesus and the fear of the Lord. And I believe that the Lord is gonna take us a little bit deeper tonight into some, what the fear of the Lord actually means in his heart and through the scriptures so that we can come into alignment with what Jesus wants to do, that he can pour out his goodness in, in, in our hearts tonight and bring us deeper into alignment with his heart for, for our community and with one another. He really wants to, to deal with our hearts and to, to allow us to experience his love in a deeper way tonight. So I just wanna invite you, if, if you wanna feel free to stand, you don't have to stand for this whole thing. We're just gonna go into worship and let's just stand at the beginning just to honor the Lord. And I'm just gonna lift up a prayer. And then if you guys, you know, there's a lot of space here. So if you wanna move around, if you need to kneel down, there's an altar here. So we just want to open that up, you know, however you feel um, you're going to connect with the Lord and, 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 and be able to worship him and to connect with him. If you need to open your Bible um, or whether, whatever you need to do, we just want to open that up for, for anything. So, Father, we just thank you for your great love. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the wonderful, amazing Savior that we have and the Lord that we have. Lord, you showed us the way how to how to walk in the way of the kingdom and we're so grateful we're so grateful for you jesus we thank you that you're not just uh, an idea or a religion god but that you walk with us lord that your promise is that you'll never leave us you'll never forsake us in fact you're you're so close that you say you live inside of us and we live inside of you it's a great mystery and we're so grateful god just to be a part of your family that we get to experience your mercy and your love and your goodness and your joy. And God, I just pray that you would pour out 
who you are upon us tonight, God, as we as we lift up our songs to you, as our, we lift up our prayers to you, that primarily, Lord, you would be delighted in our prayers. You would be delighted in our songs. And beyond that, Lord, that you would be delighted in how we walk out of this place and do tomorrow and the next day and the rest of the week. Lord, that we would be transformed into the image and the likeness of Jesus by the presence of the Holy Spirit and the power of your love, God, would you come tonight, Lord, and rearrange our thinking, rearrange our hearts to come into a full alignment with who you are and who you've called us to be in the name of Jesus. We love you. We worship you, Jesus. Amen.
to God. All you lands, sing out the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth will worship you and will sing to you. They will sing to your name.
lift lift up your voice and just sing from your heart. Just sing a song to the Lord. We love you, God. We honor you, Jesus. We glorify your name. We pour out our love to you, God. Surrender our hearts to you, Lord. Magnify your name, Jesus. You alone are God. You alone are God. There is no other. There's no one like you. There's no one who can compare to you. You are holy. You are worthy. You are glorious. You are the almighty God.
We're just going to keep our hearts in a posture of thanksgiving and of worship. During this time, I just encourage you, you know, just to get in a, a place where you can really just, just pour out your heart to the Lord. Um, we're going to be praying from 1 Corinthians 13. So if you have a Bible, you can, you're welcome to follow along. Um, 1 Corinthians 13 is a parallel, there's a parallel psalm that really just stood out to me as I was studying this. It's Psalm 103, um, because obviously 1 Corinthians 13 is uh, an encouragement for what love is. What is love, what is love supposed to look like? Like, how are we supposed to walk this thing out called love? And you know, God doesn't expect us to love in a way that he doesn't already love. Like he doesn't expect us to do something that he's not already doing. So I think the, the way that it's spelled out in Psalm 103, so, if, so those of you who are familiar with that psalm, you're going to hear some of that coming through, and these guys are going to sing. So how this works is I'm going to read the scripture, or actually uh, Jordan's going to sing the scripture, and then we're going to just come through 1 Corinthians 13, um, really honing in on verses 4 through 8 and 13, um, which are very familiar, I'm sure, to a lot of you. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to pray those back to the Lord, just as a thanksgiving, as a love offering to the Lord. Um, we're just going to lift up our, our prayers. So if you would just, you know, when we're singing, like when these guys are going to sing back and forth a little bit, and they're just going to be singing their prayers. They're just going to be worshiping with song. And then eventually they're going to run into what we call a chorus, which is simply just a line that repeats over and over. And when they do that, then everybody gets to jump in and we get to sing along. So if, I don't know, it's hard to hear back there as far as the words go. If you guys can hear the choruses and you want to type them in, that's cool too. But otherwise, if we're just following along the best we can to be able to hear these guys. and Because the heart, the heart behind this is we don't want to put on a show. Like we're all here together. Like, yes, we have the instruments and the microphones and all that, but essentially we're all here together and we want to worship together. So we want to give you guys an opportunity to participate as much as possible. So here it is, 1 Corinthians 13. Lord, your love is patient and kind. Like a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord gives compassion to those who fear him. God, we thank you for your patience and your kindness towards us. So great. 
are patient, you are kind. You are patient, you are kind. Like a loving father. You are patient, you are kind. Like a loving father. You are patient, you are kind. compassionate Yes, Lord, you're like a loving father. You're so compassionate. And Lord, you came and demonstrated love. Lord, you showed us what love looks like. And you came in humility and in suffering. And while you rule over everything and you created all things and you know all things, you were willing to be born of a virgin. You were willing to come as a human being. You were willing to even suffer and lay down your life, Lord, and you've shown us what love looks like. You've shown us the way of the king, and you are the humble king. You are the God of the lowly and the ruler over everything. Thank you, Jesus.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your endless mercy, your love that endures and never runs out of supply for all of eternity. For as high as the heavens above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Lord, your mercy is boundless and it never stops. We thank you for it. We're going to continue this uh, thankfulness and prayer. We want to open this up for all of you. If anybody feels led to just lift up a prayer of thanksgiving, we're just asking for.
just a short prayer, just a thank you, Jesus. We love you. We're so thankful for you. So if some of you could just come up and start lining up to my right here, we're just going to go one after the other and just li corporately lift up a prayer of thanksgiving. So as these guys are praying, as anyone that comes up is praying, just agree with them in your heart and let's just come into agreement. We want to hear as many voices as possible. So if, if you all want to just come up and line up behind here, Nick and Asohe, we'll just go one after the other. Father, we just thank you so much for your presence, God. We thank you for your goodness that abounds, for your love that is everlasting. We praise you and give you amazing thanks. God, I thank you that you say in um, Psalms 34, those who <clears throat> I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. God, I thank you for the joy you have placed in my life from removing fear, giving me hope and peace. God, I thank you and worship your holy name. Thank you, God. Does anyone just have something that they're thankful for tonight, just particularly? Steve, can we bring the music down just a touch? We want to be able to hear. What is it? What is it? Oh, you just, you just raise your hand. Do you have anything specific that you're thankful for? Just in general, you're just thankful? That's awesome. Does anybody else have something? Yes. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. And you have something. I just want to thank him for his overwhelming presence um, and his spirit and just everything. I don't think we can even put into words how amazing he is to us, um, just for his wisdom, for his love. Um, it's really hard to put into words sometimes how thankful we really are. Um, sometimes words fail me, um, how thankful I am. All of us in this room can be thank so thankful that we're here, that we're alive, that we're healthy. We, we could give endless thanks. We could be here for hours and all night. Um, so you, we all have things to be thankful for, but public speaking is not something that I absolutely hate is public speaking, but I can't not give God thanks because that's all I can do is thank him. And so I, I just want to thank him because he is 100,000% doing something amazing um, in my life and all of your guys' lives. And how can we not praise him for that? So. Gracias, Señor, primeramente por unirnos esta noche como hermanos, Señor, clamando el Salmo 27, 8. Me dice, mi corazón ha dicho de ti, busca mi rostro, tu rostro buscaré, oh Jehová. Amén. Awesome. Anybody else? Yes, I knew it. I just want to thank the Lord for the divine appointments he's put in my life in the last couple weeks. I was able to make it down to Asbury twice while their pilgrimage or revival, whatever you want to call it, was going on and the spirit that was in Hughes Hall was just absolutely amazing. I got to take last Wednesday, we took Torch House and I took my church up at Mecca down for the sneak preview of Jesus Revolution movie, a fantastic movie. I mean, we've just had so many things that he's laid in front of me in the last couple of weeks. It's just been so delightful. He is so good all the time. That's a great segue to my thankfulness right now. So I've just been telling everybody, like, it's really, really hard to sleep right now because of the excitement level. Like, I'm probably driving Michelle crazy. 
but I'm just like every night I'm just laying awake going, when is tomorrow going to get here? Like, it's so exciting to me just with what the Lord's doing um, locally. So I just want to, I, I guess I just have to make some announcements because we call these anointed announcements because they're things that God is doing in our city and in our nation. Um, so one of those things is happening right now about, I don't know, a thousand feet from here over at Cross Tabernacle. So we have, if you, if you, as you leave here, you'll see all these cars over there and they're having a service over there called Invasion and they'll be there all weekend through Sunday. Um, I spoke with Pastor Taylor uh, a few weeks before coming here because it was very clear that we were supposed to be here while they're having the happenings that are o over there are happening. And we've had this happen before, like we're friends, we've been doing stuff for a long time, and this has happened before where the Lord will put us in two separate places for, for a reason unknown to us. But I just, man, tonight when we were worshiping, I was just thinking, how glorious is it that this entire corner is just lit up tonight for the glory of God? Isn't that wonderful and amazing? Thank you, Jesus. So we just, I just want to take us just one second and pray a blessing for Cross Tabernacle and for the invasion. So, Father, we thank you for our dear brothers and sisters, Lord, that are seeking your face. God, that there's people literally coming from, from around the world tonight to Terre Haute, Indiana, to seek the presence of God. Lord, we're so grateful for our friends and for the anointing that you've given them and, and the, and the um, history and the um, many, many exploits that have happened. God, so many in this city and around the world have come to know you through that ministry, God. And we just want to extend a, a, a blessing to them in the name of Jesus. Lord, that even tonight, God, that anybody that even gets close to this neighborhood is going to just feel conviction of sin and turn their hearts over to you. Even if they don't step in this building or that building or wherever, Lord, but that, Lord, your presence would just permeate the atmosphere of our city tonight. And we're so grateful for what you're doing, God. Amen. Yes. Oh, it's dying. Yeah. Dying. Okay. I'm alive. Give me a new battery. Now I'm going to preach. All right. No. Um, I'm not a preacher, but I am going to share a few things. But before I do, I do have some announcements pertaining to where we're headed next. Um, so a lot of times, we, now that we're mobilized, we don't know exactly where we're going next um, until we find out. You know. So we're, what we're trying to do is just be obedient to the Lord. We do have a lot of options like we can go to a lot of different places but we don't just want to go somewhere to go somewhere so we're being very careful to lean into the lord and what where does he want us to go and an opportunity opened up as bob was talking about opportunities there are so many things opening up right now in the city for our youth and for our young people and i just want to encourage you god is going after our young people like I've never seen. I've been in this city for 12 years, and from day one, my heart and my prayer has been, God, would you find a way to bring young people in, into the goodness of who you are? And it's happening. Um, so we have our, our office, the Torch House office now is located at New Life Community Church, which is on the corner of Voorhees and 8th. And I was in the office the other day, um, and something was going on with the building, so I had to call Pastor. Uh, it's Pastor Paul Carey. For those of you who don't know the pastor there, his wife Sharon is the director of the Crisis Pregnancy Center, and they're, you know, really prominent figures in the body of Christ here, laboring for many, many years in Terre Haute. But um, I called Pastor Paul just to find out what was going on, if he could give me some answers. It seemed like somebody was in the building and the door was unlocked, and I just wanted to check into it. But... The reason I say that is because I, I wasn't calling him with any intention of asking for anything or, you know, it was just a, a maintenance thing. And he asked me how things were going, and so we started talking about Torch House and just some of the things that are happening with us. And I, I mentioned something about the potential of, at some point, coming and doing Friday nights at New Life Community Church um, and just describing a little bit of what we've been doing and he says, it's very interesting that you say that because um, I got to back up just a touch. Because for years and years, I've known that their youth group meets on Friday nights at their church. And I've, it's always been in my heart to be like, man, at some point, we got to go over there on a Friday night and just do something. Am I dying again? Okay, there we go. 
Um, so yeah, anyway, it's been in my heart for years and years, and we've been praying about it, and just like, it's never just felt like the right time, and so when we're in this conversation about something totally unrelated, he brings it up, I mentioned the building, I mentioned the youth, and he says, well, that's very interesting, because we've been praying on, and this was the, this was Thursday, so they're elder board was meeting on Wednesday morning and they were praying about two things. Number one is their youth pastor is moving away. He's moving out of state and they're trying to figure out what to do with their youth on Friday night. And number two was they've been following this thing at Asbury and following what the Lord is doing and their desire for the Lord. And they, they want to, they've been praying about like, how can we facilitate something like that here? And he got so excited and he just said, I think this is that. I think that what you guys are doing is the answer to our prayers. It's literally like the next day. And so we started talking about what that would look like. What would it look like for five or 10 or 20 youth groups to come together in this type of a setting and encounter the Lord and encounter scripture and, and to be able to walk with them and to be able to release them because ultimately, like, when it concerns young people, as far as I'm concerned, if we can find a way to let them lead, I will gladly sit in the back of the room. I don't know about the rest of you that have been doing this a little while, but, like, it's time. It's time to let some young people step in and, and release them and empower them. And so we're going to provide somewhat of a structure for this, but it's happening, people. So we're, we're kind of sending out an invitation for anybody um, and this is not just for youth. So if you feel like, man, this is great, but can I come too? Yes, you can. So it's for everybody, um, but we're just starting to announce it. So this is a very new initiative, and it's going to be every Friday. So we have seven Fridays in a row starting after Good Friday. So we'll be here all the way through this month. Good Friday, we're actually going to take off because there's so many other things happening in the city. So we have actually a noon service here, a citywide noon service here. And then there's another one at Free Life, which is also on Holman. And then there's another one in the evening at Second Missionary Baptist. So we've got all these different citywide things going on. So we're just, we're just going to take our hands off that. And then the very next week is when we're going to launch with the youth at New Life Community Church every Friday at 7. So all the way through the rest of April and through the rest of May. So that's seven weeks we're going to have with the youth. Then here's what happened this week. So we're, we're reaching out to youth pastors and inviting them into this. And we just so the, the next place we went was this lady, this young lady named Faith. And she is the youth leader at the Life Center. And the reason we reached out to them is because they're moving into the neighborhood of New Life Community and all these churches. We're trying to reach the neighborhood first and expand it out. So we thought, well, let's try the, the Life Center next. So we're sitting down with this young lady, and she says, this is unbelievable because she has already rented a rooftop downtown for May 19th, which is a Friday that's in that seven weeks. And she's inviting all the youth groups and all the college campus ministries to come for a night of worship on the roof downtown. So it's going to be at May 19th from 6 p.m. until whenever we get done. And they've already rented the roof and everything. So we're... Deli, I met with her and Deli and I met together and I'm just sitting there going, yes, like, yes, let's do this. Let's do this together. So she's making that announcement and getting the word out for that. And meantime, we're, we're collecting information from others as far as youth groups and college campus ministries. So it's, it's geared towards young people, but we encourage everybody to come and be a part of this. So man, isn't that awesome? Isn't God wonderful? <laughs> So there's a whole lot to be excited about in Terre Haute. I think that's all for announcements. So before I forget, um, we do have an offering uh, bucket, which I'm going to actually bring closer so um, you guys can reach it. But um, all we ask is just from your heart, if you feel led to give towards Torch House and towards what what we're doing here, um, there is different ways to give, like we're, we have an offering basket, but we also have ways to give on our website, which is torchhousetth.com, and then you just click on the giving uh, for that. So 
Um, this is the time when we usually, we'll go into a time of intercession. So sometimes it will be for uh, maybe another nation that we're going to pray for. So we pray about this stuff all week, like we're thinking about it, we're praying about it. Which direction do we go corporately together of what do we want to intercede for? And more often than not, we end up interceding for the church. And the reason for that, I believe, is, first of all, it's scriptural. There's a lot of prayers in the Bible, and most of them have to do with praying for the church because they're, they're letters that are written to the church. But I believe there's wisdom in releasing intercession for the body of Christ. So when we pray these prayers for the church, we're praying for ourselves, but also we're, we're extending that prayer to the greater body of Christ. So we're representing the whole body of Christ when we're praying these prayers, but we want to identify ourselves both as the church, but also as the intercessors for the church tonight. Um, so the thing that the Lord has been speaking, as I said before, is the fear of, or sorry, the love of the Father and the fear of the Lord. And one of the things that has been really, um, that has really stood out to me over the years in my work with um, having a ministry that unites people, like we're talking about I think at this point, probably 20 to 30 different churches that are somewhat involved in some in different in various ways. So what you discover out there is that there's a lot of different ways of thinking. There's a lot of different ways to do church. And there's a lot of way. There's a lot of different things that actually divide us. And it breaks the heart of God. It breaks my heart. And it and so I've pursued that question of like, what is it that divides us and what is it that unites us? Because what's important right now is what's going to unite us and what can we move forward in together. And that's why these prayer gatherings are very simple because I think if we love Jesus and we ask the question, can we just pray together? I don't think anybody can disagree with that. I think we can find a way to pray together. Um, but more specifically, as, as we talk about the fear of the Lord, um, there's one dimension to this idea of the fear of the Lord. Like if you study this out in scripture, there's, there's a lot of verses in the Bible that refer to this thing called the fear of the Lord. And there's a whole lot of content to study. And there's a lot of different ways to approach it and to think about it. And there's some simple ways to explain it. And I'm always kind of like hesitant to just like put it into a sentence and go, the fear of the Lord is this. Because I feel like the fear of the Lord on that, to, do, to even do that, you know, like I want to do, do well by the Lord to represent what he's saying when the scripture says the fear of the Lord. And, it's, and the fear of the Lord essentially is to bring us into alignment. When we get out of alignment, the Lord wants to correct us. He wants to bring us in close to him. So the whole objective with the fear of the Lord is that we would draw near to the Lord, not to run away, not to be afraid of him, but to draw closer to him and to who he is. So when he reveals his nature to us, like we're drawn to him and we're drawn away from the things that displease him. So I just want to read to you, um, this, is, this is the fear of the Lord pertaining to judging others. So this is kind of, kind of a heavy subject to be praying for. But when you study the scriptures, as far as it goes to what it says about judging others, there's kind of two dimensions to it. So there's one, there's some scriptures that say we are not to judge. And then there's other scriptures that talk about we are to judge. So it's a little bit confusing just from that standpoint. But whenever we have a dichotomy like that, it means there's something, there's a central reality that the Lord's trying to get beyond. He doesn't want us to just go, well, I'm in the judging others camp and I'm in the not judging others camp. It's not to separate us. It's actually to unite us in him. So the greater reality there with the fear of the Lord is how we view one another. This is really how we're able to judge in a way that honors him is when we're able to view one another through his eyes and from his perspective. And the only way to do that, I think, is to get on. A, it's like a level playing field where every person has intrinsic value to the Lord. And whenever we get 
out of out of sync with that reality and we start to elevate ourselves in any way above other people regardless of what they're doing or who they are or where they're from we we start moving into a, a thing that doesn't please the lord and i want to read to you from first john 4 and if you can turn there turn there i'm going to read from first john chapter 4 starting with verse 7 through 21 so 1 John 4, 7 through 21. I'm just going to let the scriptures speak for themselves. Beloved, let us love one another, for God is love. Or sorry, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, we love God. Oh, in this way, the love of God was revealed to us that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love is perfected in us. We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And we have come to know and to believe that the love that God has for us God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, God's love is perfected in us so that we may have boldness on the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has to do with punishment. Whoever fears is not perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For whoever does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? We have this commandment from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. I'm just going to read one more passage. This is from James chapter 3. James chapter 3, starting with verse 13. James 3, 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy or selfish ambition in your hearts... Do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Thank you, Jesus.
So ironically enough, um, I think the reason why I was thinking about all of this so much lately is because I've been watching the live footage from Asbury and I've seen a lot of critical voices coming against what God is doing and it's really breaking my heart and I, I sense the fear of the Lord when we, when we have young people giving their lives to Jesus and worshiping him endlessly and we can't see God in it like I, I'm really it really scares me it freaks me out a little bit and I think what God's revealing through that gathering and even tonight through us gathering you know he's chose us he's he's chosen to bring us together in our differences so that our hearts can be exposed to our true condition. And that way the Lord can deal with each one of us. He doesn't want us to isolate, deal with everything, get perfected, and then we become one. He actually wants to perfect us in love. And that means coming together with people that aren't like you. And that is difficult, (laughs) right? And who is like you anyway? I mean... You're unique, right? Everybody has their own vantage point, their own preferences and all those things. And the Lord is saying, would you be willing to set those aside and come together with one heart and one mind and one purpose for the glory of my name? That's what he's asking. And that's why I feel such a a tremble on the inside of me when we're praying for this, that for our own hearts, I think every one of us could probably identify times in our lives where we've looked at somebody else or some church down the road or some denomination or anything and we've actually placed judgment on people when we don't have the authority to do that and it's a scary thing to to go to say some of the things that we have said and to think some of the things we've been thinking it's 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 not right and it doesn't mean that we don't correct one another actually that correcting one another becomes possible through love like it's actually the only way we're going to properly be able to to bring alignment into the body so there's so much to this and i i I would apologize for making this too heavy but i can't i can't apologize because it's where we're at if we want revival and if we want to see these young people come to know jesus and we don't want a year from now to have nothing happening we have to get this right as a city. So I'm asking you, First Nazarene and anybody else that's here, would you join with me and intercede on our own on, the, on behalf of our own hearts, but on behalf of our city. That when city leaders hear about the rooftop, they wouldn't speak evil against it. Cuz it's this young lady that we met with has has pure motivations. All she wants to do is see young people come to know Jesus and to worship together. Isn't that beautiful? So I think we I think as as stewards of of this we need to actually help um help people understand this. I think if you hear somebody speaking poorly about another believer and you you sense that they just don't have a clue what they're talking about, you need to stop them and tell them this isn't right. We would you just like before you speak, can we just pray? Can we just take a step back and maybe your vantage point is a little bit off. Maybe you're not actually able to see everything. So I'm going to stop preaching now because I think we're all there. We're all on the same page. You know, we want to get in a place where we're able, you know, the the scripture says, you know, why are you looking at the speck in your brother's eye when you've got a plank in your own eye? And right now it's like tonight is about removing the plank from our own eye and removing the plank from really the eye of the church because this critical divisive spirit it permeates the culture we see it everywhere and it's infected the church in a deep way and we we have to remove it we have to stand against it but i think the best way we can stand against it is by not by choosing to walk in a different way like guarding our speech guarding our hearts if if things are coming up in our hearts we have to take that to the lord and repent and bring it to him and say lord you you're gonna have to change my heart 
and rearrange my thinking. All right. So this is odd. I'm getting back to the statement I made earlier about this being ironic because I've been studying this all week and going through countless scriptures and trying to find the place to land. And I landed in Romans 12 on specifically Romans 12 verses 9 through 21. And this is what we're going to be praying through. And what I realized after the fact is this little section of scripture is the scripture that they preached from when what released the Asbury revival. And I didn't know that until after I, I, I didn't remember that. I knew that that was the case, but I was looking at this going, this is perfect. This is just right. This is what we need to pray for. And then I realized it's exactly not just the chapter, but the verses 9 through 21. That's what they were preaching from. So we're going to go after it. So I'm going to go ahead and lead different prayer points. And you guys can just join and agree with me in your hearts. And then we're going to have an opportunity again for all of us to pray at the end together. So thank you, Jesus. Romans 12, verse 9. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. If possible, so as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good Lord we come to you on behalf of the body of Christ of Terre Haute of Vigo County Lord we ask you to teach us the way of love Lord that we would love in sincerity and in truth that we would actually prefer one another and try to outdo each other in showing honor Lord, that we would hate what is evil and we would cling to what is good. Help us to learn how to love one another well. genuine love. be sincere.
real love. of love. Father, help us to speak the truth in love. Lord, help us to be honest with one another, especially when the relationship is damaged or when somebody's walk with you is compromised. Lord, we're not very good at this, Lord. We often even go too hard on people or we avoid the situation altogether and neither one is pleasing to you, Father. I pray that you would help us to abound in love so that we can speak truth with love to those who have drifted and have fallen away or are straying away from you or where that relationship isn't quite right, where there's unforgiveness or where we know someone isn't forgiven us, that we would be the first ones to go to repair that relationship, that we would be bold with the ones that we know are believers that are following you who are doing the wrong things, Lord, that your, your love would just compel us to be gentle and to lead them back to you, God that they would see your love in those conversations, Lord. They wouldn't feel judged or rejected. They would feel loved. So, Lord, we just ask you to help us to speak the truth in love.
You are the truth. Let us speak the truth in love. Let us speak the truth in love. Your way is the truth. is narrow. There's no room for divisions. No room for compromise. pray that you would help us to be slow to speak and quick to listen. Lord, I pray that we would quickly recognize offense when it rises up in our hearts and we'd be just as quick to remove it. Lord, offense is like a cloak that comes upon us quickly. And in those moments, God, I pray that your grace would be upon us to become aware of that that it's something that we're not designed to wear and that we would be willing and able to take off that cloak of offense when it arises, Lord. That our MO would be forgiveness. Father, we thank you that we have given up our rights to be offended when we said yes to following you. If anyone had the right to be offended, it was you. And yet, even while people killed you on a cross, you looked and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So Lord, we thank you that you've given us the high honor of serving you and of laying down our rights. That our only right as citizens of your kingdom is to become more like you, Jesus. So God, I just pray that you would Heal our hearts from offense. Allow us to not speak evil of other people or to try to defend ourselves. Lord, that we would wait upon you, that we would walk in patience and endurance when others are yelling and screaming and hating, that we would demonstrate love and choose not to be offended but to forgive and to walk in your tender mercy, God, the same mercy that you've given to us. Let it be extended to other people in the name of Jesus.
We would bless each other. To humble ourselves. That we would bless each other. draw near, to come close, and to kneel down. So when I think about blessing others, I think about drawing close and kneeling down and humbling myself and asking the Lord, what's in your heart? What's in your heart for this person? What do you say about them? And it's, it's harder with someone who has come against you or doesn't agree with you or maybe they've attacked you or hurt you or cursed you in some way or they've hurt someone that you love. But I've learned that in asking the Lord to show me what he sees because I, I can't see what he sees. But what's in his heart for every person for every human on this planet, regardless of what they've done. And I ask him to show me, to, to teach me how to be a peacemaker, to give me the words that would bless someone. I would open and humble myself to actually listen to what they have to say allow the Lord, allow the Holy Spirit to remind me of Jesus. mend broken bridges. We can reconcile uh, broken relationships and families. Yeah. And he can heal. Even, even if you never, ever, ever hear the words, I'm sorry.
God can heal those places and he can bring people together. So, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. That actually one of the greatest testimonies from the Asbury revival is the students that said they they experienced something in the way of loving the people that they used to not get along with. Like there was a lot, there was a young lady that gave a testimony. She said there was people that were really difficult for her to love and just, they were in really difficult relational situations. And she said all of those in the presence of God was just washed away. And they're, now they just love each other. They want to pray together all the time. And so we can actually preemptively do that because it's a command. Like we're actually commanded to do that. We're commanded. There's 56 commands about one another in the scriptures so before we leave tonight i think it would be just appropriate whether it's where you're at or just at the altar if you want to kneel down as michelle was saying just there's probably somebody or some group of people that the lord's been putting on your heart and just before we leave tonight we're just going to continue to play and just give you guys an opportunity just to lay those things down oh yes oh good okay so yeah just keep playing no, i will you will okay um, but what I, what I want to ask is, um, if you would just set your hearts before the Lord and, and sometimes it does take a physical act, like to get up and actually kneel down and to turn around your seat and kneel down, or if it's just to sit in your seat and just get in a, in a position of humility and just ask the Lord with that particular person or that group of people or whoever it is, Lord, what should I do? What should I say? And how should I pray? So let's just do that before we close out. And if you need to go, you guys are dismissed to go, but just don't go, don't leave this place until you, until you deal with anything that the Lord's brought up in your heart during this time. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. that are not of you in my life I am called to worship I am called to bow the sum of all my days is to love you overflow your grace
the things that are not as if they
The wonderful thing about when the Lord invites us into something difficult is that the promise on the other side is something way more beautiful than what we could produce otherwise. And these little heart surgery moments, like they hurt sometimes in the moment and sometimes it's more of a process than a moment or more of a journey. And it's like these things are, are things that will reappear and things that we'll have to deal with along the way. But the more that we get accustomed to the way of Jesus in, the, in how we handle our hearts, it does get easier. It does get quicker. The surgery and the work gets quicker. So I just want to encourage you, go from this place with that equipped in your tool belt. And the next time somebody rubs you the wrong way or, or blatantly offends you, you got something to work with. So, Father, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you for the love that you poured out to us when we were far from you, when we were not even paying attention to you, you interrupted our lives with your love. And we're so grateful for it, God. We just bless our city tonight. We bless um, every person here, and we bless uh, the family here at, at uh, First Nazarene, God, that you would just just continue to pour out blessings throughout the week and th over the weekend and into the Sunday service, God, that you would just uh, bring everyone's hearts together in, in just an incredible way. God, we love you. We thank you for your presence, and we honor you in the name of Jesus. Amen.